name is Sven and you're watching Starcraft Pulse. Before we begin the show, I think we just need to have a quick moment of silence for the loss of our beloved Beta. Alright, let's get to it. This week's news is not the most entertaining we've had, but at least there's something. According to an article on the Wall Street Journal, Activision Blizzard spent the ridiculous amount of $100 million developing their RTS sequel, StarCraft 2. If you want some help putting it into perspective, quality games like GTA 4 or Red Dead Redemption only cost about $80 million to develop. So let's hope, for our sake, that Blizzard makes all that money back when they release the game. The guys over at Blizzard have revealed the official system requirements for the retail version of StarCraft 2. The requirements aren't that crazy and I think most people should have little to no problem at all running the game. If you didn't make it into the beta and you're not sure if your PC has what it takes, check the links below for the full requirements. The beta version for the new Battle.net site is now live. From the main page you can access either the StarCraft 2, World of Warcraft or Diablo 3 Battle.net sites. The StarCraft 2 site seems to be the only one that's up and running now, and the new theme and style on it is a major improvement over the old generic Battle.net site. From the new Battle.net beta site, you can check character profiles, look at your own screenshots and videos, and even read game guides written by the Blizzard gurus themselves. Be sure to check it out, you can find the link below. For anyone interested in what's going on with the whole real ID thing in any Blizzard games, there's a new FAQ up over on the official Battle.net forums. You can read up about all the features and innovations in this new system, and here they're reasoning about removing the real ID on forums thing. Blizzard recently released a list of all the countries that will receive the retail version of StarCraft 2 on July 27th. Don't be sad if your country isn't on the list though. Blizzard assures us that they are in fact planning on taking over the rest of the world sometime soon. See the full press release in the links below or over at blizzard.com. According to a quote from an official over at Blizzard, after you purchase and register StarCraft 2, you'll be able to download the game in all available languages. I guess that is pretty useful and a lot of players will let out a sigh of relief upon hearing it. There's also a full activation FAQ in the links below. Are you at all interested in the new StarCraft 2 novel Heaven's Devils by William C. Dietz? Do you like building extravagant and intricate sand castles? Well then this competition is just for you. Between now and the 26th of July, the guys over at Kotaku want you to build a video game themed sand castle for the chance to win one of 10 of the StarCraft 2 novels. It sounds like great fun and if you have access to a beach you should definitely give it a go. Head on over to Kotaku to read more about it, or just check the links below. Another Sunday brings us another Zotac. Without fail, the guys from over at Zotac have brought together some of the best players to compete for their now highly sought after cup. The finals saw the infamous Terran player De Muslim take on another Terran player, Jimpo. De Muslim managed to win with a rather convincing 3-1. The games in the Zotac number 16 replay pack are definitely worth a watch, as the tournament had some rather big names competing. The go 4 ac 2 Cup also ended last week with a Terran player Strelok taking the win. He managed to best the Protoss player White Ra with a score of 3 to 1. You can see both tournaments full results and get the replay packs in the links below. Just a quick mention that some clever guys on the Team Liquid forums managed to fix that pesky black screen replay problem. So if you were one of the people having problems watching replays while the beta was down, check the thread in the links below. That's it for international news, let's check out what's been happening on the local scene. The 8 players set to compete in the StarCraft 2 launch event at the end of the month have been revealed. The lucky invitees are Dreamer, Chase, Kreeflewe, Angry African, McNoob, Rubilak, Jax and Alcaradu. Good luck to all of them and stay tuned for more information regarding the event. Just remember, if you want to go to the event as a spectator, registrations for spectators are now open over at the Do Gaming website. I'm sure it's going to be great fun and anyone vaguely interested in StarCraft 2 should try and make an effort to get there. As the launch of StarCraft 2 approaches and players ready themselves for the first StarCraft 2 exhibition event, Fourpooled will be bringing you the lowdown of all the players participating. Be sure to keep checking back on Fourpooled.com for updates on South Africa's best in the StarCraft 2 scene. Fourpooled will be releasing the player profiles one by one as we count down to the launch of this most anticipated of games. As you may already know, if you watched the previous episode of StarCraft Pulse, there were a few tournaments here in South Africa over the past week. We had the FPPQQ Phase 2 tournament and the first, both of which were won by Dreamer. The Protoss player Dreamer and the currently random Chase met in the finals of the FPPQQ tournament. They had some close games, but Dreamer managed to take it in the end. In the finals of the fist, we saw the Terran player McNoob and Dreamer duke it out. McNoob's cheesy strategies were not quite enough to take down Dreamer's calm and collected playstyle. Dreamer managed to take it 2-3. 
Read more about that over at meton.co.za or polarfluke.co.za. Let's see what's been happening in the general blizzard news. There are some big things happening in the World of Warcraft community. The hugely popular MMO Champion website has been acquired by Curse Gaming. They warn everyone though that the only changes that will be happening to the site will be improvements. A recent developer chat on Twitter has been transcribed by many of the big World of Warcraft news sites. Blizzard revealed a huge amount of changes and plans for the World of Warcraft and Cataclysm. It's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in that kind of thing. The Cataclysm beta servers have been hit with a huge patch this week. And with it came a lot of changes, improvements and fixes. But, yes, there's always a but, there's a login issue at the moment which requires players to change a few things in their games folder before it'll work again. If you're lucky enough to be in the Cataclysm beta, you'd best check that out before trying to log in. MMO Champion have recently revisited the Cataclysm Guild perks the replacement for the previously announced Cataclysm Guild talents. There are a total of 25 guild levels and each level will reward guild members with an extra perk. The leveling process of the guilds remains pretty much unchanged. You'll gain experience through PvP, dungeons, raid progression and even questing. It's an interesting way of doing things and I think a system that rewards activity is great. World of Raids is a nice article up detailing all the major faction characters in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. It's nice to see how things have changed and where they all are in the expansion. You can check that out over at worldofraids.com. The Cataclysm expansion tie-in novel by Christy Golden, The Shattering, now has a sneak peek and description available for viewing. The novel looks like it could be a great read and I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on a copy when it's released. Another thing that's probably worth mentioning to all the raiders out there is that the Icecrown Citadel buff, Hellscream's Warsong, is now at 30%. So any guilds still struggling in Icecrown Citadel should be able to get through there now with that little bit extra. That's it for this week's episode. I thought I'd just mention that I'm probably going to be attending the midnight launch of StarCraft 2 at the BT Games in the Somerset Mall on July the 26th. That probably doesn't mean much to all the international guys watching the show, but for the local guys, now you know where to find me. So thanks to all the regulars watching the show and all the new viewers and subscribers. See you all next week and I hope you all manage to stay busy for these last few days before the game's launch.